Hi guys, this is Shayna from yumiyarns.com and we are back with day five of our toe up socks class. So yesterday we finished our short row heel and I should have told you uh, yesterday but I kind of forgot. You can use this heel the exact same way for cuff down socks. It is literally all the same instructions, you're just going the opposite direction. Um, but it's a completely reversible heel so it works either way. <clears throat> We are using it for our toe-up socks. Um, if you need help with any other aspects of toe-up sock knitting, cast on, everything else, <laughs> uh, check out my previous videos in this series. I've got links to everything below uh, this video in the show notes. Um, and they're also available over at yumiyarns.com with some extra stuff like photo tutorials for different things and um, a little bit extra content over there. So today we are using Suburban Stitcher Sock Yarn. This is the Clean Slate colorway, and this is the Sea Smoke colorway. And Diane is our featured dyer for January for the Indie Sock Along. Um, and the Indie Sock Along is basically a year-long knit along celebrating indie dyers. Each month you get a new sock pattern and you get to meet a new indie dyer. And it's kind of fun. Um, it's $2 to sign up for the month of January, so sign up if you're interested. I've got, again, links below. <laughs> or you can just pick up the pattern um, on Ravelry or on yumiyarns.com. Um, so we are going to get started. We are at the leg portion, and I am magically going to break my yarn. <laughs> uh, so I broke my contrast color, and now I'm just going to be working with my main color. So you can see we did the toe, the foot, the heel, and I'm gonna zoom you out just a bit so you can see. We had talked in an earlier lesson about how um, the rate of increase is slightly different between the toe and the heel. They're pretty close, but you know, you can see the toe kind of tapers a little bit more, and the heel is much more just an angle. Um, and that's okay, You're, this will form to your foot, so you see these kind of points here, those will form to your foot when it's being worn, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and then the toe, we have a little bit more tapered toe so that it doesn't get all pointy and scrunched in your shoe. <laughs> uh, but that aside, we are going to be working the leg of our sock today. This is super easy. We've already discussed what stockinette is and all the simple stuff that way. Um, and for our legs, since we're doing just a plain vanilla sock, it's literally just going to be knitting around in a circle until it's the length you want. So one of the things um, that does come up though <clears throat> is trying to make sure that you don't get holes right here. So in the previous video, I gave you the option, you can either use your contrast color and knit all the way back to here to your beginning of round and then break it, or you can break it on this side and um, if you had left your yarn attached and just continue on with your main color uh, for the end of this round. And that's what I'm doing so that I can weave in the ends of my contrast color as I go. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to show you guys, see how you can kind of cinch this up. Um, because we made sure that we caught our main color when we were initially inserting our contrast color, got a nice tight connection there. So you're not going to have problems with holes in the corner. See how, look at how pretty those short rows are. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how magical the short rows seem uh, when they turn out and everything. So right now I'm just going to do a little bit of a refresher on my weaving in ends technique while you knit. Um, so the first stitch I'm just going to knit. The second stitch though, I'm going to pull it kind of tight wrap it over top of my needle, grab my working yarn, wrap it the normal way, and then bring that 
contrast color back over so it's actually wrapped around the working yarn and finish knitting the stitch. I'm going to knit the next stitch because that's what locks it in and I'm going to set up for this stitch. If that whole wrapping one way and then the other is really confusing, um, this is an easier way to remember it. You simply insert your needle as if to knit, take your tail, wrap it over and around your working yarn, like that, and then knit your stitch. And then knit the next stitch, insert your needle as if to knit, wrap the tail around your working yarn, finish knitting your stitch, and knit your next stitch. And see, it's getting it all woven in for you. So I'm gonna zoom you in just a little. There you go. I'm gonna, as if to knit, wrap your yarn your tail around your working yarn. Finish your knit stitch and knit the next one. So I'm gonna go back to how I normally do it because that's more comfortable for me. Um, and just work in a couple more here. <clears throat> As we get across. And once you get going with it, it does become kind of second nature to just do that weaving in as you go. Um, and it saves a lot of time in the finishing. And that's, you know, probably more than enough tail woven in. Um, I usually go for an inch or two. Sometimes I'll go just until I run out of tail um, because I'm feeling lazy and don't want to try and find my scissors. <laughs> but... Yeah, so we'll just knit across here because at the corner I want to show you something. Um, because we had done the contrast color, we were able to cinch up that first join uh, between the yarns really easily. But if you're doing a single color or like when you get to this part where it's a little bit stretched out and um, you have more fabric here than you do over here. Uh, if I just knit straight across there, that's that's going to make a hole. So you can kind of see that if you squinch it together. It's not going to line up and play nicely together very well. So what we're going to do, I'm going to rearrange these since I'm done knitting on that one. What we're going to do is kind of close up that gap. There's um, a technique that I showed in the toe up socks class for avoiding holes. And uh, we're gonna do that again here. So in the row, so you find this working yarn or the strand between the yarn. If you're doing a make one, that's the strand you would knit into. We're actually going to go the stitches right below it, this one, and this one. And we're going to put them right up here, and we're going to reorient this one because see how the stitch that's on the right side is actually the stitch that's for this, or the leg that's for this left and the leg that's on the wrong side is the leg that's furthest right, that's backwards. We want oops, to not drop it off. Uh, we want to switch it so that the leg that's on the right side is facing to the right, and the leg that's on the wrong side, the one back there, is facing towards the left. 
It's a little bit harder to see, but that's how this one is already sitting. And we're actually going <coughs> to knit these two legs. Come on. There we go. My stitches are trying to escape. <laughs> there we go. We're going to knit these two together and off the needle. And I'm actually, because we want to get back to our normal stitch count, just going to slide that stitch that we just made right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to knit these two together. There we go. So that is all set. You're back to your normal stitch count and you're not gonna have a hole there. So I'm just gonna keep knitting across. And once you get to the other side, um, if it looks like that join isn't quite as tight as you want, you can do the same technique over on that side. Um, but I feel like ours is probably pretty solid uh, because of how nice and tight we got it earlier. Uh, so I am just going to keep working on my sock. Um, when we're working the leg, if you're working a pattern, oops, I'm gonna zoom you out just a little. <coughs> when we're working the leg, um, sometimes a pattern will tell you how long to knit the leg portion, and sometimes it'll tell you like measure from the bottom of the foot. All that means is lay your sock out as if you're getting ready to wear it. There we go. And then uh, you just take your tape measure. I've got one that three Irish girls sent me. I keep with me. And you measure, lay your sock out flat, just like this. Measure from the bottom of your heel to where the needles are. So we're going to ignore this one because it's up and down. We only want the horizontal needles. So, so far I'm at two and a half inches with my one row that isn't technically a heel. <laughs> um, so we're going to keep working. You can actually make the leg as long or as short as you want. Um, if you're wanting ankle socks, I do recommend giving yourself at least like an inch of just straight knitting here before you add in your ribbing, unless you're doing a special technique. Um, there are some sock patterns that um, have techniques in there so that it doesn't roll and stuff like that. Um, but if you're just doing a straight sock pattern like this, give yourself a little bit of leg before you start that ribbing because otherwise it's going to fall into your shoe and it will not stay up and you'll be very sad. <laughs> um, so give yourself a little space there. If you're doing uh, mid-calf length socks like these ones, um, since I'm making an adult size sock, I am going to be knitting mine to, um, I think it's five and a quarter inches of actual leg, which means I'll have you know close to eight inches from the bottom of the foot. Um, another way you can kind of gauge if you just want a mid-calf length and you don't want to have to measure, um, you can actually just take your sock, fold it like this as you're knitting it, and then measure up to here once, uh, and this is usually how I do it, honestly, if I'm just knitting vanilla socks. Um, if you lay it this way, the top, the leg portion will just fold out across the top of your foot. Um, and I usually just knit the leg portion until I'm about where my toe it, um, started. And then you can start your ribbing and then cast off and your leg will usually end up being about this long compared to the foot of your sock. Um, and that seems to be a pretty comfortable length. I've got a lot of knitting friends that have said that that's their kind of go-to method for measuring when to stop their socks also. So that's kind of something to keep in your mind uh, if you don't want to sit and measure things constantly. 
Um, if you're working a stitch pattern, the leg is kind of nice because you don't have to keep track of which side is the top and which side is the bottom like you do with the foot. Um, you can just knit in pattern around and around and around <laughs> till it's done. Um, and yeah, so usually with those also, since you're working from the heel up, you're going to want to finish whatever pattern your repeat is on um, for the most cases. Sometimes you'll have a pattern that doesn't matter, but usually you're going to want to finish whatever pattern repeat you're on before you start your cuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to keep working around and around and around and finish up my leg. And then uh, tomorrow we will be back with the ribbing portion. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you're liking the tutorials and the classes. Um, if you are enjoying them, please uh, like the video and subscribe and let your friends know. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great day and happy knitting.